Hello, hello and welcome to building a credibly sustainable travel industry together. My name is Kate Heine, I'm the Vice President of Sustainability at Booking Holdings. And uh, I'm new, I've been here about two and a half months, um, but while I might be new to the travel industry, I do come from the world of sustainability within fashion, consumer products, and retail. So. There are very similar topics that we're going to be talking about today um, as they transcend many industries. At Booking, due to our most recent consumer research, we know that 76% of travelers say they want to travel more sustainably in the next 12 months. That's up 15% from 2021. However, over half of our travelers don't believe that there are enough sustainability travel options. So making it easier for travelers to make the choices that they say they want to make is central for all of us here in order to build a more sustainable travel industry. How we communicate the various sustainability efforts already present, because many of you are doing a lot of efforts already, and how we make it easier for travelers to find those efforts is a big focus of booking and also a vital topic for today's panel. How can we come together to provide our customers what they say they want in order to make the choices that they want to make in a credible and meaningful way? So to discuss this topic, we have a panel of guests spanning destinations, accommodations, digital travel, and sustainability. So please join me in welcoming our panelists. Welcome. Thank you for coming. So today we have uh, Booking.com's very own Head of Sustainability, Danielle De Silva. We have Per Christensen, the SVP of Marketing at Kayak. We have Luis Arujo, the President of Tourism Portugal and President of the European Travel Commission. And Marco Lemmers, the CEO of Conscious Hotel Group from right here in Amsterdam. So I'm gonna just start off with maybe a, a big picture question here. So can you tell me about, and Louis, I'm gonna to look to you actually for, for this one. Can you tell me about some of the challenges and opportunities that the industry faces um, in order to create this long lasting systemic change in order to embed sustainability within the industry and maybe even address some of the challenges that we're hearing from travelers? Perfect. Well, first of all, good afternoon. It's, it's really difficult to be the first panel after lunch, so hopefully there will be some discussion, I hope. Um, and thank you for, for having me. Um, challenges. I would say the biggest challenge is that we finally realized that sustainability is not a competitive advantage. It's the only way to do business. And I think this is clear for most of us, um, at least for the majority of us. The question is, and I think that's the challenge, how to address that and how to change that behavior. Um, in my case, being a DMO and representing all the European DMOs, uh, what we do, of course, is tackle this into several areas. Clearly, regulation. Uh, I can give you the example of Portugal with changing the regulation to be a five-star hotel. It's not just about having slippers in your bedroom. Uh, if you're not sustainable, you cannot be a five-star hotel, definitely. So regulation is clearly one of the goals. The second one is financing. Enterprises need money to adjust, especially when we're talking about environmental sustainability. And all the credits that we give, we don't give them if a, an enterprise is not sustainable. Training data, knowledge, I would say a bunch of areas that we touch. The only thing, and I think the biggest uh, three challenges are three conclusions that we reach most of the times. Uh, the first one is we're pretty much focused on the environmental part, not as much on the social part, 
And uh, sometimes we forget the impact we have in our local communities. We forget that our industry is made of women and sometimes we don't have that much women in C-level positions in most of the enterprises that work in the world. Uh, and that's a fact. And sometimes their salaries in average are lower than men. Uh, and not to talk about uh, other things. Um, the second thing has to do with what we can do um, as enterprises and as businesses in order to change this behavior in the consumer side. It's not just the supply and the consumer. And we've seen that the problem is we don't have time to lose. And if we wait for the consumer, probably it will take longer than we expect. So this is the time to do things immediately. So these are the two things with the third one, which is the bigger the response, the bigger you are, the bigger the responsibility is. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy to be here at booking.com listening to you talking about, uh, about sustainability because I think we all agree that uh, an enterprise like, like booking showing the lead or taking the lead in sustainability means that it's very positive, but there are still many things to do in that sense. So many things to do, but yes. thank you for that. That's a good starting place. And on the, the customer side, the travelers, um, Danielle, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the barriers that you've uh, heard and that we've seen in the research that customers are saying are holding them back from making those choices. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've heard it now several times in the intro. Femi also referenced it. We know that travelers increasingly want to travel more sustainably, and that has been increasing for the last several years. But the barriers that they face remain strong, and those aren't really changing. So I think that there are three key ones that are coming out and, and maybe are even growing this year. The first one is they can't find the sustainable travel options that they're looking for. And perhaps that's because they don't know exactly what they're looking for. Perhaps it's because they actually can't find them or because they think that what they want in a, a sustainable option isn't there for them. For instance, they think sustainability will be too luxury, or not luxury enough, or it's not in the destination that they want to, or it doesn't cater to a family visit. The second thing that we hear, and particularly in this economic climate that's, that's really important, is the perception that sustainability costs more. And that's not just the case for travelers. I'm, I'm sure that there are many people in, in the room today that has that perception as well. But cost is key right now, and travelers are thinking that, that this is a key part of their decision-making process. And so addressing that perception is, is critical. And then, of course, the final piece is around credibility and consistency. Travelers who are looking for sustainable options want to make sure that those that are labeled sustainable are credible for them and that they can really believe the claim, that, claim that's being made. And more importantly, they also need to make sure that they understand and it's consistent between platforms and providers that are, are making claims or explaining what they're doing on sustainability. So all of these things are still barriers for our travelers. But of course, for our travelers to be able to make more sustainable choices, we also have to be able to provide more sustainable choices. And so it has to be easier for our partners or for you as well. And so we don't just speak to our travelers, we also listen to our partners and hear what they have to say on this. And we hear that everyone in the industry wants to move forward on sustainability, but there are key barriers for our accommodation providers as well. I'm sure Marco can speak to this you know, more succinctly than I can, but what we're hearing is that there is still a perception on cost on the accommodation side, that it costs for, for providers to put in these practices, that it, they don't necessarily what, know what to do next, so maybe they've taken some initiatives already. But more importantly, even if they've taken steps on sustainability, how do they actually showcase that back to the consumer in a way that is clear, is, is supportive in their decision-making process, and that the customer trusts as well? And finally, one interesting thing I, I learned over the last research is, while I already knew that less than 10,000 properties globally are certified by a third-party certification, we found that the vast majority of our properties that we work with today are taking actions on sustainability, but they don't have the way, or they haven't in the past had the way to show that back to the consumer. And so these are some major things we need to address. Thank you. And I think your point on credibility, it's of course in the title of our panel, but I think is also maybe something we want to dig into a little bit more here because credibility is so connected with sustainability and having the trust in the data and the information that's being provided. So we've heard that repeatedly. Um, Marco, I'm wondering if um, you can share a little bit, Conscious Hotels is a pioneer in this space. 
And um, how do you approach bringing sustainability to the forefront of the customer experience in a way that feels consistent, credible, and, um, and maybe comparable even across, across different properties? Well, um, a short explanation about uh, conscious hotels. Thanks for having me. Um, conscious hotels, well, the, our payoff says it all. Uh, our payoff is eco, sexy, big smiles. And those are the three pillars of our concept. Um, big smiles is actually the uh, people part, uh, being an inclusive employer, being good for your city, neighbors, etc. But let's focus on eco, planet uh, part. Um, we've combined it with sexy, and uh, I think it's crucial because we won't inspire people uh, to make a change uh, if we make it sour. Yes, there's some things going on, but I believe in a positive mes message, inspiring people to uh, behave better, to learn about uh, their doings, and then next time they might also at home uh, take different uh, uh, choices in their life. So a positive message, so that not only 1% of the world population does it 100% right, we need everybody to take steps to get into action. So that's our approach. I really like that, and I think we'll come back to this, uh, this point about a journey and taking a step at a time. I think that's important across the board, um, and certainly within sustainability. Per, I want to ask you a little bit um, around transportation. So the transport industry, you know, is, is slightly different. Um, so how do you see sustainability coming to life for the consumer when they're booking their transport options? Um, and in a field like aviation, for instance, um, how do we help to guide consumers to make the choices that they want to make in an authentic way? Yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a really good question because it, it is... Transportation is totally different. Um, what we have is that we know, like Danielle talked about, that the travelers, they want to travel more sustainably. They don't know how to do it. Uh, they, they need information, and they need information at the right time. Uh, so that's where we are right now. And they also, what we saw in, in our recent research is that they also look at all of us and say that we should actually deliver it because they expect that from us as travel providers, uh, which is also a really important thing to mention. Uh, when we have that as the basic, uh, then kayak is uh, price comparison as the basic. So it's all about transparency. Uh, when we talk about sustainability, it's basically the same. How do we make transparency within our platform so that the travelers can know what options they have and how they can make informed choices? When we have the, uh, when we have the, uh, an ex my favorite example uh, is going from Cop I live in Copenhagen. Uh, going from Copenhagen to Hamburg, it's a one-hour flight. It's a normal business trip, so it's pretty expensive by flight. Um, and it takes an hour, maybe an hour to go to the airport, an hour by play, plane, and then an hour to go from the, from the airport to the city center. So it's a three-hour transportation option. Uh, if I do that search in, in, uh, on Kayak, we, we decided to put in all the, all the transportation options within that search. So that you both, for Copenhagen to Hamburg, you see flights, you see trains, you see buses, you see cars and so forth. So you see all the different options. Uh, and then you can make the decision. Uh, for example, in this case, uh, I could choose to take the train. It will take me five hours, so two hours more. Uh, but I will also save on the CO2 sign. Uh, and the train is way cheaper. Uh, so, so that's one of the things that we're trying to do. So instead of, I think, maybe a year, two years, three years ago, we used a lot of time on putting sustainability on as a badge, as an add-on. Uh, but what we're trying to do instead is to put it into the normal booking flow, put it into the normal people are searching, finding out what to do, uh, talking about it as transportation and not as a flight option, uh, especially when it's within, uh, within uh, Europe, uh, where the distances are fairly short. Mm -hmm. uh, then other options, ground transportation and so forth, mm -hmm. is, is really important. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing uh, normalizing that discussion as just part of transportation and creating transparency of, of all of the data points that customers might be looking for. Very interesting. Thank you. So, Danielle, we just heard a little bit um, from both Per and Marco on how to make these practices visible to customers um, and the need for transparent 
but also aligned information. I think we didn't, we didn't hear a lot about that as of yet. Can you share a bit about the Travel Sustainable Program and specifically what's gone on over the past year or so? Absolutely. And just for my own point of reference, can I have a show of hands? So how many people in the room are familiar with the Travel Sustainable Program for accommodations? You have just seen a video that mentions it, so I feel like that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the Travel Sustainable Program for Accommodations is our way of recognizing the sustainable initiatives that properties are currently taking. Because I said earlier that only 10,000 properties currently have a, a third-party certification, but we know that properties are taking a vast array of, uh, of actions already. And so the Travel Sustainable Program is a methodology that we created together with many peers across the industry to uh, assess the impact of activities across the categories of energy and greenhouse gas emissions, waste, water, biodiversity, and local community impact. And what we then can do is display those back to our travelers so that they can use that information while booking. And previously, when we launched in November 2021, it was a, a badge and a filter available on the site. And since then, we've had over 1.25 million properties sharing with us what they're doing on sustainability. And by now, we have over 450,000 properties that are recognized with a label. So the scale is absolutely immense. And from there, what we've done is to make sure that we're showcasing, of course, the broad range of levels that properties are in their sustainability journey, so to say, recognizing that certification is really the gold standard, but that properties who are taking fewer but meaningfully impactful steps should also be recognized. We now have four distinct levels in that Travel Sustainable Program. So there's level one, two, three, and certification, so that you as a property can display what you're doing on sustainability, whether you're earlier in your process or all the way at certification. And a traveler can really see the full spectrum of sustainability options available to them and compare and contrast and actually have a consistent way of assessing this information. And then to take it one step further, aside from just having a label like we've seen in the industry for, for 30 years, we realize that travelers don't really know what those labels mean or what, what feeds into a certification. So aside from the label itself, we also showcase each of the practices that you as a property are taking to achieve that label, just like we show if you have a swimming pool or you have other features or amenities on site, we, we display that information in the same way for travelers. And so with that, we can really start to address that, that gap. I think Luis mentioned previously the, the regulation is coming in. And so as we have just increased the, taken the, the program to the next step with levels, this year is also now moving into thinking through how do we make this program future-proof with the context of regulation coming in and making sure that all of this information provided to our travelers is as robust and clear and credible as it can be to make sure that this program can deliver the impact uh, that it has the potential to do. Thank you. I think we also, in the Booking Holdings family, have an, another update on the, the sustainable uh, travel program this past year. Per, do you want to say a little bit about Kayak? Yeah, definitely. Um, just tracing back to what we talked about, about transportation. I think within transportation, it's, and talking about sustainability, it's fairly easy to get data insights and, and know what is the emissions and so forth when we talk about flights, cars, trains. Um, but I think the accommodation part for us has always been a challenge because, all, as you know, all the hotels, all flats, all the partners, everything is different. Uh, so how do we get that overview? How do we get something that we easily can put into our machine and, and show that to the traveler, uh, showing that these properties are different and why are they different when we talk about sustainability? Uh, and that's why I really like the Travel Sustainable Badge because it gives us the possibility to, to have a piece of content about the properties that is easy for us to, to display to, the, to our travelers and, and to make them, uh, again, to give them the, an opportunity to, to make informed choices. Uh, so, so I think that's sort of the, the core for us and, and how do we do that? And I think when we, I think it's three years ago now, we launched uh, less CO2 sorting for flights, uh, which back then it was a huge thing. I know it's, it's a big, uh, everyone is doing it now, but back three years ago, it was really big. Uh, and what we saw back then was that a lot of the providers, partners, really wanted to talk about it because suddenly it, it was a thing. Suddenly you changed your order in the sorting, uh, so it had a huge impact. And I think we see the same with the Travel Sustainable Badge, uh, that it is a thing, and it's, as I see it, it's, it's very much the beginning, uh, or it's, uh, it's the beginning of the, of the program, 
uh, and I'm really looking forward to see how far can we go. Yeah. Uh, and it's all of us, of course, uh, working together on, on finding uh, the next step and the next step for it. Well, I love that. The next step and the next step and the next step and the next. Because we all know and we talk about, as Marco alluded to, sustainability is a journey. And I think those are some, that's some progress that you've seen with booking and kayak over the, the past year. Um, but Marco, I'd love to hear maybe if, if you have, you started to talk about the journey for conscious hotels and that there's a, a process and there's progress to be shown there. For, um, I mean, we have, we have partners that are just starting out on the journey. We have partners that are further along. And that transparency and that set of information to travelers and customers is actually um, helpful. They just want to know. And if you don't share, then it's often seen as, as lying or trying to obfuscate the information. So maybe could you talk a little bit about how, how our partners um, can get started or maybe if they're further along advanced, like what is some advice that you might have? Well, um, uh, focusing on um, hotels, um, um, if I would slice up a hotel, there's this building with the installation, the infrastructure, uh, you usually invest in that and it, uh, it's there for the another 15, 20, 30 years at least before you have to do a lot of stuff. Then the FF&E, the inventory, the stuff you put in there, uh, seven years, 10 years with two COVID years, if you stretch it, it's not been used a lot. But then um, the operation is, let's say, a daily choice. So if people said, well, I, I just opened this hotel and what do I do now? Well, you can start with the operation, the day-to-day purchases, the vegetables you buy, etc. Uh, tomorrow. Um, and actually for us it was a big surprise. We did a life cycle assessment study in the past. Um, and people just focus on the building with the installation. Actually, we've learned from that life cycle assessment study that the investment in uh, the FF&E, so the inventory, and uh, the day-to-day -day operation, it had a bigger footprint than the building with the installations. And it's also what you see if you, as consumers, speak about sustainability. Yeah, my gas bill. No, every buck, every uh, uh, euro, dollar you spend from your uh, income has some footprint uh, factor. And I don't want you to become gloomy about spending because I think mm -hmm. it's also good that the economy is, is rolling. But um, uh, if you become conscious about that, that if you buy shoes, if you buy other stuff, there will be some aspect of climate change, toxicity, um, land use, there will be impact. And uh, so my advice is, uh, you can start with your day-to-day -day operations tomorrow, you know? Uh, and I understand that incremental steps in your building with the installations, that need some planning. Well, uh, I think Putin does help us raise uh, uh, energy prices. Uh, so I think people are more willing to invest in um, uh, green energy solutions, solar panels, etc. So that did make a change uh, uh, this winter. Um, no, so th uh, that's my advice. Um, uh, and that's uh, where you can start uh, tomorrow. And also think about, maybe that's also uh, one to uh, give back, think about trying to do one thing specific, make it clear to your guests, customers, but also to your staff, because for staff it's also important that you think about purpose. Eh? We have difficulty getting uh, staff on board. So what's your promise? What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to work meatless because mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, good for our planet. That's my promise, that's my belief, uh, and that's a really clear uh, goal to share as a, as a, eh? as a group. Uh, as a uh, hotel or chain of hotels. And it also makes it really clear to uh, guests arriving at you. Just simple, small, short promises. Now we know what we're getting. Yeah, I like that. I, I, you know, take a step, share the information, make sure everyone knows what you're working on. And the addition of employees is, is a very important one. I think those are our ambassadors. Those are the people that can be sharing these messages. So I like that. Um, Lewis, is there anything that you'd like to add at sort of a, maybe an industry level, some um, yes. advice that you have? Well, I, I think, as I said previously, we're pretty much committed in changing the entire value chain 
if we're talking about sustainability, it's not just about the hotels or the consumer. You have to change everything. And from the supply side, I would say, and especially focusing on staff, uh, training and qualifications are crucial for sustainability. In fact, during COVID, we launched a digital academy. Uh, we have more than 150,000 registered just in Portugal, and most of them did the training in sustainability. So it shows how important the issue is for everyone. Uh, but it's pretty much more than that. It's investment, clearly. It's data and having knowledge based on what you're doing and what your customer is doing. Going digital and more technological, I always say that technology is the best friend of sustainability, clearly. But it has to do also with changing the mindset of the consumer. And sustainability is not just a marketing item or a marketing campaign. And clearly, and I'm really happy to be here today because I can say this, I've said this once, so I can say it twice. Um, because we all have a huge responsibility. And it's not just, especially the bigger we are, I say again, it's not just showing and giving information on what people do, it's rewarding them. And most of these enterprises that are sustainable should be rewarded by anyone who works with them, either by showing them in a bigger scale to the audience, either by, I don't know, just giving them some rewards. But this is crucial right now because we have the ability to have the stick and the carrot in front to drag sustainability much more quicker and much quicker than we used to ha than we did before. So uh, if we do this, that I, I think we will be much more resilient to what will happen next. And I have to tell you two things which are very, very clear. The first one is obvious. Uh, if we don't do anything, the planet is as, as, as it is. The second one is there is an easy target, which is travel and tourism. So if we don't show the world that we are doing effectively with results, all of us, then probably we will be an easy target again, as we were these past two years. Thank you for that. Um, we have one more question here, so maybe we can. <laughs> that was, I like, I like your uh, your prophecy there about perhaps being uh, a target. Maybe we also have some positive outlooks for the year ahead. <laughs> um, but I'll ask each one of you, um, what comes next? So we've just shared, you know, that there is this gap between what our uh, customers are looking for and what they can find. We have a lot of efforts underway. We have regulation coming. So there's a number of um, kind of uh, factors that are pushing us all in, in, this, in this way. What would you like to see in the coming year um, with regards to sustainability within the travel industry? And maybe we'll start down here at Marco on the end. Thanks. Um, I think we'll... Uh, I'm, I'm going to complicate things, but uh, we focus now a lot, of, um, a lot on climate change. I think, uh, especially in the Netherlands, there's uh, this uh, a big debate also where we well, uh, have a lot of farming, and actually there were recent elections, and there was definitely some uh, pushback, but we've, let's say, used up a lot of our land, and there's no real good balance in the Netherlands. It's even preventing ha uh, building of houses. Um, so uh, land use, uh, impact on biodiversity, uh, toxins, those are, let's say, also life cycle assessment uh, uh, categories uh, in their complex footprint uh, model. Um, I'm overcomplicating, I know, but those will be next challenges. Uh, uh, we will learn and understand that to have a healthy planet for future generations, well, first, let's focus on this climate problem. I get it, but there's more coming. Thank you. Julius? Well, a very practical one. I would like to see more rewards on the Genius program for those customers who are sustainable, definitely and lower commissions for those suppliers who are sustainable and prove they are sustainable. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be invited again. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Uh, and Pear? Yeah. How can, I, how can I say something after that? Okay. Um, 
I think it's it's. Um, I think where we are right now, and you also said, Kate, that we're very much in the beginning of the journey. Uh, I think some people are, are considering their choices now, but we have uh, maybe the majority uh, don't think about it at all. They will still travel like they used to and so forth within the next few years. So I think the if I should make a wish, I would like to see that process fuel a bit faster so that the majority will start to engage on sustainability and figuring and, and think about their choices. So think about if I'm uh, going from my example of Copenhagen to Hamburg, think about the, the means of transportation for that trip, the means for staying in Hamburg and so forth. Uh, and I think that's, that's not a common thing today. It's still very much some markets in Europe are hit, some markets are behind. Uh, but it's still f for, the, for a few people to discuss it, and I would like to see that it just becomes more of a common thing that, of course, you consider that when you, when you travel. Okay, thank you. Danielle? Yeah, I'll, I'll flip it just slightly to, to at least share what, what's on my mind for the coming year. I think there's three things. The first is related to making sure that we seize the opportunity with those hundreds of thousands of properties that have shared with us that they're taking some efforts but aren't yet recognized through leveraging education and actually supporting, because there's so much insights into the blockers that, that you as partners are facing to increase your sustainability efforts. The second is around looking throughout the entire value chain. We spoke a lot about accommodations today, but of course this is much broader than that. And then the third is in, in, the, in light of what we see with the regulatory environment coming to travel, there is a need for deeper collaboration. There are some uh, problems that we can solve together. And so creating a real dialogue to address these together is something I'm really looking forward to in the coming year uh, and I think is much needed. Great. It sounds like we have a lot ahead of us. We have more topics that we need to be addressing. We have our, some, some business Discount. model, <laughs> business model uh, actions and feedback. <laughs> We're uh, trying to engage more and more of our, our consumers. And in total, it sounds like with the regulation that's coming, we actually need to come together a little bit more than, than we have been so far uh, to be able to either get ahead of or at very minimum be up to speed on, on where that's going. So please join me in thanking our panelists for today. I uh, really appreciate your time and your insights. Thank you.